On May 23rd, the Bendigo 3 will go back to court for a contest mention. And I hope you, the supporters out there, will be there as well. No doubt, the left and various groups will be there chanting out the usual same mantra. Various Facebook pages, left-wingers such as the Nonacats and Slack Bust and so forth, are promoting this diversity doctrine. You know, Muslims are welcome, racists are not, as you heard outside the court when we, the Bendigo 3, were out there. And this obsession by the social justice warriors and even the LGBT community saying no to Islamophobia, diversity, equality, and all that sort of thing. Just got a question to these morons. Try telling that to the gay men that are being thrown off buildings. Or the gay men that get hung in the Islamic Republic of Iran. That is right. The places on the face of the earth, the countries that execute homosexuals, are all Islamic countries that enforce Sharia law. Now, the LGBT community must be on drugs. They're that blind and that stupid that the more Australia embraces Islam by allowing hordes of Islamic people to come to this country, the more you, the LGBT community, are going to be in danger. Well, the Kafir in general. And the stupidity behind this. I'm going to show you a couple of verses. In Quran chapter 4, verse 16, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, translation, it states, If two men among you are guilty of lewdness, punish them both. If they repent and amend, leave them alone, for Allah is off for turning most merciful. So convert to Islam and stop your ways. To be fair, as a Christian, I expect the same thing, but... If you continue with your homosexual practice, I'm not going to throw you off a building or hang you from a crane because it is written in Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Verse 17 of chapter 4 of the Quran says, Allah accepts the repentance of those who do evil in ignorance and repent soon afterwards to then will Allah turn in mercy, for Allah is full of knowledge and wisdom. 18. Of no effect is the repentance of those who continue to do evil until death faces one of them. And he says, Now have I repented indeed, nor of those who die rejecting faith. For them we have prepared a punishment most grievous. Now in the Islamic world, who does the punishing? It is, is it the divine judgment from God or do they do it themselves? Remember, jihad, whether it be subversive through to open violent jihad, it is about fighting the kafar. Now, the kafar can be anything, gays, pagans, even Christians and Jews, unless we're willing to submit and pay Jija poll tax, which is in the Quran chapter 9, verse 29. But in Quran chapter 9, verse 14, it states, Fight them, and Allah will punish them by your hands. Cover them with shame. Help you to victory over them. Heal the breasts of believers. Now, if we go back to Quran chapter 2, Verses 216, it basically states, fighting is prescribed for you and you dislike it, but it is possible that you dislike a thing which is good for you and that you love a thing which is bad for you, but Allah knows and you know not. So it's prescribed for Muslims to fight against the kafar in violent jihad. 
not just subversiveness. And just in case you want to pull out, well, it's not always in Islam, and some texts are not relevant today, well, I'm sorry, in Quran chapter 2, verse 106, it states, None of our revelations do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, for we substitute something similar or better. Know ye not that Allah has power over all things. Despite the evidence that Islam is a grand threat to this nation, the left continue with their diversity dogma, their progressive agenda, which is a globalist agenda, to destroy what's left of our heritage in this country, to forever change the face of Australia. Now, on October 4th, 2015, the Bendigo 3, outside of Bendigo Council, performed a political stunt, which was a mock beheading to highlight the dangers of Islam. Regardless of the evidence, it seems like the state wants to be offended on the behalf of Islam. We are charged with Section 25-2 under Victoria's Racial and Religious Tolerance Act, as previously stated. The DPP also has to sign off on this particular section, as previously stated. There is no Plaintiff, in other words, no Muslim, has put in a complaint, as previously stated. The Bendigo 3 are going to fight these charges. All the way. We're not going to tolerate the state overstepping its boundaries. Remember, there is no legal precedent for this particular case. This is the first time it has been tested. So thank you for those who have supported us, and we'll see you there on May 23rd. But in closing, I want you to wait for my next video and I want you to realise an Islam and the problems associated with it are merely a symptom of a greater problem. In my next video, consider it part two of this one. I will explain why the greatest mistake Australia made was ending the white Australia policy. Now I know, by saying that, being a nationalist, from left and right side of politics, we get labelled Nazis. But prepare for my argument, because if I am a Nazi, according to the left side of politics and the right side of politics, so are our forefathers, those who wrote our constitution. Just one example, the late Arthur Corbell leader of the Labour Party. These are his words and what his thoughts were regarding our nation.